If everything goes to plan, Jaron Campanella is right now stationed in Coronado State Park in San Diego, looking west, waiting for a beautiful sunset. He is aiming to see San Clemente Island, about 77 miles away, right in line with the sun as it will set. And he hopes to capture evidence for his false beliefs that the Earth is actually flat. Now, in typical Jaron style, he will probably confirm again that the Earth is actually a globe. He has done that before, you know. Okay. Lift up your lift up your light way above your head. Interesting. For starters, if the sun sets, that's already devastating for flat Earth. Everybody who paid attention in art class will know that perspective does not arbitrarily make everything just disappear especially when the sun will probably still be around half a degree in horizontal angular width. I mean, the people looking straight up to see that same sun while he is watching his sunset will see the sun equally big, meaning no person is that much closer or further away from the sun, meaning that the sun is so far away that it can't be local. And also, Jaron probably used a globe earth heliocentric set of data to predict his sunset and alignment. I actually doubt that he used a polar azimuthal equidistant map, the one that most flat earthers believe in. It's probably just peak finder or sun calc. Also in Jaron's style, he will probably try to be as close to the water as possible. Although today he told me he aimed for a parking lot 12 to 15 feet above the water. But as we all know and have experienced, weird atmospheric stuff happens when you are close to the surface of the earth or close to water. The temperature of the atmosphere can differ quite drastically, influenced by that very surface or water. And if you have temperature differences between lower air and higher air, light will not travel in straight lines anymore it will refract towards the more dense medium, so if at sunset the water is still rather cool and thus cools the air right above it, but you have some warmer air on top of that, as a result of a sunny day maybe, you will experience downwards refraction more than you already do due to the pressure difference. And this allows you to see even further than a globe with no atmosphere at all. And that's the reason why observations like the black swan can happen. On normal days, you will clearly see that the horizon is obstructing the second platform here. Luckily, it will be rather obvious. Distortion will probably reveal that it was an unstable situation, although, although that doesn't always show. Now, I spoke to Jaron and asked him for his exact location. They were scouting for a good spot on Coronado Island in San Diego. I tested that location for the 15th of April using Peak Finder, and while increasing our observer's height a bit to look over the virtual curve of the Earth, an alignment with sunset was actually guaranteed. Now, the prediction, as you can see, is that the entirety of the island should be behind the curve of the Earth, even with a standard amount of refraction. Now, I suggest to Jaron to perform two observations simultaneously, one close to the water, the one that he prefers and the one that he will probably do, and one on top of Point Loma, which is just a little west of Coronado State Park, but it has an elevation of over 260 feet. From there, a near perfect alignment with Thirst, the highest peak on San Clemente Island, should happen, and it would confirm that the higher you are, the more of the island you will actually see. It also allows you to avoid the more extreme atmospheric conditions at the lower elevations. But Jaron replied with an interesting video and some commentary. Watch how simple this is for you guys not to get it. Here's this just laying on the ground. It's carpet, camera really close to the ground. And we lift up, all of a sudden we see, oh my goodness, there's a whole bunch more stuff there. Even though they know what this is to know if you retard it. Okay, pretend that's a boat. As you get lower and lower to the ground, the boat gets, oh my God, how is it disappearing from the bottom up? It's disappearing from the bottom up. It's ridiculous. It's like so simple. Of course, the higher you are, the further you can see. Wow. As you can see, he acts so surprised that due to perspective, the carpet takes more portion of his view when higher up. But this is expected. And it is not the argument here, is it? We are not interested in the ocean, but what sticks out of it. 
And here the wall and the door in his garage, they are visible the entire time, both from a low and a high observer spot, proving that the flat surface does never obscure anything from the wall, and this of course means that on a flat earth, the entire island of San Clemente should be visible to him. But there is more. He continues. Who can see further? A snake or a bear? A mouse or a panther? Ah, this is really kindergarten stuff, but listen to this, and I really didn't make this up. This is why none of respect you guys at all, the least skeptical people on earth. We were told people who went to college were smart. We have now realized it's the opposite. I would predict you did go to school. Oh, yes. Um, I went to school like, I mean, I live in Europe or college because only such a person would have the inability to think outside of their provided religion. Now I did indeed go to kindergarten, school and college and I have learned about bears and panthers and I did indeed learn about perspective when I studied to become an art teacher and I did learn about the shape of the earth when I became an actual landscape architect. Now, the insoles, they became weirder and weirder, but in the meantime, I was working with Bart from Science It Out on YouTube to render some globe earth and flat earth predictions using the measured temperature gradient of the 15th of April last year. That's right, in San Diego, in Miramar, there is a weather station that measures a vertical profile of the atmosphere every 12 hours, and it gathers data for temperature, humidity and air pressure. And with that information, Bart was able to render these predictions. He built a ray tracer that used the Earth as a sphere, and then maps on top of that sphere the elevation data from the Shuttle Radar Topography Mission, which is a one arc second global dataset from USGS. And this program also traces the light and the refraction that happens using these measured data points from our atmospheric sounding. And the results are pretty accurate. We actually used this program to solve a little mystery. I will link that video at the end of this one. Bart also sent me a flat earth prediction using the same atmosphere. Now, obviously, Jaren wasn't happy with these predictions. I don't know where you get your own made up flat earth predictions. Well, yeah, obviously we do have to make them ourselves because no flat earther is actually testing how the flat earth would look like. And now you know, they come from Bart. You would never see this far unless the sun backlights the mountain. Well, yeah, of course, but that's exactly what Jaren is trying right now. So it's a good thing that we actually rendered what you would be able to see if the earth is flat with the sun as a backdrop, right? Now I predict that you would not see this, but he is pretty sure. It will be there, I am quite positive. This was our conversation exactly one month ago, so I asked Bart again to do some rendering and we took the data from the last two readings that are online. One thing I need to mention is that the station is high up in the hills and the reading only starts at 137 meters, that is 450 feet. So we will add the measured ocean temperature in the temperature gradient, which isn't ideal, but it's a good guess. And that's the reason, by the way, why I asked Jaren to take a thermometer with him to measure the air at sea level. Now he was confused about this question. What difference does the temperature make if I'm looking over 70 miles? How does the temperature at one point out of millions make a difference? I explained it to him, don't worry, but he didn't really get what I was saying, so I'm not really sure if he's actually going to measure it or not, although today he again asked me that question, so guess that he is going to measure it, and I hope that he will ask the person who is standing on Point Loma to measure the temperature too, because that will make the temperature profile even more accurate. And yes, of course, ideally we want more points along the line of sight. Yeah, sure, but I assume that he doesn't have, you know, a boat in between him and the island, so the best he can do is just, you know, gather as much data as he can. 
Bart also found a prediction of the temperature, so not a measurement, but actually a forecast. And this resulted in a very similar prediction for the globe. So these are still predictions and measurements from the day before. So of course I will update you when the real data is coming out and hopefully afterwards when Jaron shares whether or not he measured the temperature. Now another thing that I'm checking is the satellite images. There are some clouds behind and even in front of the islands right now. And if those clouds are at the right elevation and thick enough, we can have another Creed from Israel incident. Hopefully his tripod is stable enough because we don't have an oil platform to our advantage this time. If it is a cloud, we should see it move, in this case to the left. I asked Jaron if he was going to keep an eye on the satellite images to include the possibility of him misidentifying clouds. He said no and then he muted me. Now, Jaron is always bashing on how dishonest and brainwashed and indoctrinated our law is like you know all the time so in fact I didn't expect this level of toxicity and ignorance from him. On the other hand he is a flat earther. Now we just have to hope for good weather and an honest Jaron in the hope that he will communicate all his findings. If he doesn't succeed by the way he is going to move up north the next day to capture another alignment, this time from South Pronto State Beach to see Catalina Island 65 miles away. But the alignment is actually poor from that location, so I checked it for him. Um, the next thing that you said for the day after, I have a little concern there. So if you go to, was it South Pronto Beach you said? If I go there. It's very nice animations. And we skip one day, just one day, to the 16th of April, and I elevate the observer. There isn't really an alignment, so maybe if the Earth is really flat and uh, you can look over the, the curve of the Earth. Well, not the curve of the Earth, of course. Um, yeah, actually you are too, too south for this observation, so my advice should be to actually go all the way to North, maybe Pelican Point. Looks like a nice point to be. I've never. I, I didn't check the uh, satellite images or something. But you can see that there is, you know, higher chance that there will be some alignment. But in fact, because um, this island is way closer and we will only see the peaks, I suggest, if I may, that you go even more north. Maybe. Terramar point. Looks like you can have there some um, some place to uh, maybe move south because over here, as you can see, I'm zooming in, there will be a, a, the, the, the southernmost point of the island. There will be some peaks. So this is how I do this. And we go more south. You can see the animation playing. And yeah, this is a better, better alignment. In fact, it looks like this is a, a higher elevation in the terrain here. Um, you can see it at the bottom, uh, 43 feet. So what could be interesting is this is doable. As you go to the shore, you can see that the island looks to sink a bit. And, and another observer is a bit higher because this makes a difference. So again we'll see if he takes my advice seriously or not. For now my prediction is, and of course I cannot be sure, but my prediction is that he won't see San Clemente Island from the park, but that his colleague there on top of Point Loma will actually see the island. That is if there are no clouds in the way and if the haze doesn't obstruct his view. So fingers crossed and until then take care my fellow apes. Bye bye.